Hello everyone, uh, welcome to lecture session 10. So this will be the last uh, lecture uh, in module 3. So in the previous class we had uh, discussed the physics of natural convection heat transfer. We have um, established how the natural convection phenomenon takes place and also we had seen the Nusselt number variation. Uh, the non-dimensional groups of importance in natural convection heat transfer. These things we had discussed in the uh, previous session. Now let us take up a few typical problems which are uh, uh, important for your examination also. Let me take up those problems. The first problem, I will just read it. Consider a square plate of 0.6 meter. So the dimension of the square plate is 0 0.6 meter. In a room with stagnant air, these type of sentences are a clue to you that this is a natural convection problem. Stagnant air, the air is not moving. If he had given some velocity of air, obviously, then it would have become the forced convection problem. Stagnant air at 20 degrees Celsius. One side of the plate is maintained at 100 degrees C while the other side is adiabatic. So one side he has insulated, on the other side he is maintaining 100 degrees Celsius. Determine the heat loss from the plate when the plate is vertically placed. Okay. The second one is when it is horizontally placed with the hot surface facing upwards. Okay. So this is the problem. Let us try to solve this. The approach is somewhat similar uh, to the forced convection problem. Only thing is the constants that we will calculate, the non-dimensional numbers are different. So let me ca consider case 1. So vertically, the uh, surface is placed vertically, the plate. So let me consider this as the plate. He has given that the surface of the plate is maintained at 100 degree Celsius, if I am right, yes. And the uh, fluid is at a temperature of 20 degrees. He has given that this height, this is a square plate. So obviously, this should be H equals 0.6 meter. These things are given. Now, again, the steps are similar. What was the first step to calculate the properties of the fluid? Let us do that. So, this is somewhat similar to the external flow problem that we have already solved. Okay. So, step one. The fluid is air. Properties of air at film temperature. Now, how do you calculate film temperature? T wall plus T infinity by 2. So, this is 60 degree Celsius. So, I have the property values with me. So, you note down from your handbook 1.060. So, I will not write the units. Let me write for this one problem. Mu 20.10 into 10 power minus 6 kg per meter second. Prandtl number of 0.696 and thermal conductivity of 0.02896 watt per meter cube. So these are the properties at 60 degrees Celsius that you can note down from your data handbook. Okay, page number 34 in the seventh edition. Once you get the properties, what did you do in the previous force convection problem? You went to the calculation of Reynolds number. Now, instead of Reynolds number, what you will replace? You should replace it with Grashoff number. That's all. So, Grashoff number. This is the change. The procedure. Grashoff number GR with respect to height. Okay. So, this is rho square G beta delta T uh, H cube by mu square. This is the formula. So you will get this formula as a list in page number 125 if I am correct. So you just check it out. 
So before the start of the convection chapter in your data handbook, there is a list of all the dimensionless numbers. So the formula is directly available there. So if you forget this, you can get it. Or if you go to the natural convection section, again you have this formula given there itself. So there is no need to memorize this if you cannot remember. Okay, It is good to remember because if, if you do, your uh, solution will become quicker. So what is beta? How to calculate this? This is 1 divided by Tf. Okay, But you have to take care that Tf should be represented in Kelvin only. Very, very important. This is where many students will make a mistake. 60 plus 273. So this will be, if you do the calculation, 3.003 .003 into 10 raised to minus 3 per Kelvin, 1 by K. Okay, this is beta. What is delta T? Delta T is given by Tw minus T infinity. Tw minus T infinity. For this case, it is 80. 80. And all the other values are given, given to you. So you substitute all the values and get the Grashof number. Grashof number is 1.415 into 10 power 9 okay this is one step which is done but uh, in natural convection to decide whether the flow is laminar or turbulent like we did in forced convection problem you require Rayleigh's number not the Grashof number so let us calculate that Rayleigh number Rayleigh number with respect to height h is nothing but gr into pr very simple so this Rayleigh number for this problem is 9.853 into 10 power 8. Okay. For vertical surfaces, vertical plates, so the uh, transition or the critical Rayleigh number for uh, uh, transition from laminar to turbulent flow is 10 power 9. Is 10 power 9. So since the Rayleigh number that we have calculated is less than 10 power 9. So you can write that the flow is laminar. It is laminar. Okay, very important. So you should make this qualitative uh, comment. Okay. Now, step uh, 4, we can proceed. Calculation of Nusselt. Calculation of Nusselt number. So the formula, so here you recognize that this is a constant wall temperature type of problem. Constant wall temperature problem. The first page of the free convection chapter will uh, give you this formula. So Nusselt number based on, uh, uh, he has written as length L. So I will just write H. Okay. So this is 0 0.508 parental number to the power of 0 0.5, 0 0.952 plus parental number uh, minus 0 0.25 into Grashof number based on height 0.25. So this is the formula. And below in the same page, you will find that the average value is nothing but four thirds of this value, NUH, four by three times of this value. You use this and you calculate, so you will get the average Nusselt number as 96.729. So, which is nothing but H average, okay, into capital H by K, okay. Therefore, what will be the value of the heat transfer coefficient? So after substitution, so you will get the heat transfer coefficient as the average value as uh, 4.668 watt per meter squared Kelvin. Please remember the value of heat transfer coefficient for natural convection is not very high. So it should be in this range, which is okay. Now Q, uh, the heat uh, loss rate that we are trying to estimate is nothing but H. 
surface area into delta t where delta t is nothing but tw minus t infinity so if you do that so you should get 134.44 watts this is the solution to the first half of the problem very easy all the correlations are present in the handbook only if you are familiar with solving force convection problems this will not become a very big uh, task to you next uh, let us take up case 2 so i'll write here case 2 when it is placed horizontally so there is a condition also you have to place such that the hot surface is facing upwards so this will be insulated so this is the hot surface tw equals 100 degrees celsius and t infinity is 20 degrees celsius so whenever you place the surface horizontally um, tf is again same it is uh, 60 degrees only the fluid properties need not be changed the Grashof number definition will change please remember so this you will find in your uh, data handbook so it is in page number let me just refer it for you 136 page number 136 so i'll write it here for your reference seventh edition of the book page number 136 if you take um, i'll give you the equation also equation 2.1.1 here at the start of this equation he has mentioned at what value you are supposed to calculate your crash of number and uh, he says that calculate crash of number at l equal area by perimeter use this formula to calculate crash of number so for this case it is 0.6 squared by 4 times 0.6 which is 0.15 meter use this l to calculate crash of number so crash of number at l will get you will get it as 2.211 into 10 raised to 7 so which yields the really number as 1.539 into 10 raised to 7 so this is also laminar uh, no so there is no laminar or uh, turbulent for horizontal conditions that you need to consider just calculate this value now based on this value there are some correlations which are given to select the appropriate one for this uh, ra range of reynolds number uh, sorry uh, rayleigh number sorry So Nusselt number for this particular case is 0 0.15 into Rayleigh number to the power of 0.333. Okay. So if you do this, you will get 37.105, which will yield. Here is this. You only retain the Q. And, yeah. So you will get the heat transfer coefficient for this case h as 7.164 watt per meter squared kelvin obviously your q will be higher so this is around 206.32 watts that's all this is the solution to this problem so when when you what is the change here the only change is that instead of Reynolds number, you are supposed to calculate Grashof number. Otherwise, uh, uh, referring to your handbook, so you can easily get the solution. Okay. So let us take up problem two. I'll read the problem. A horizontal high-pressure steam pipe of 10 centimeter outside diameter passes through a large room whose walls and air temperature are 25 degrees Celsius. So you have uh, a pipe which is going through inside a room wherein you have these walls which are at 25 degrees and also the ambient air is at 25. The pipe has an outside surface temperature which is constant of 175 degrees Celsius. The emissivity is given as 0.85. Calculate the heat loss per uh, unit length of the pipe. So this is a very interesting problem here 
you should also consider the presence of radiation to solve the problem okay let us uh, take up the solution of this problem so he has given that there is a steam pipe this is uh, let me say this is a steam pipe okay so now this steam pipe uh, has a surface temperature T wall of 175 degree Celsius this is placed inside a room the wall temperature of the room is 25 degree Celsius and also air temperature T infinity is 25 degree Celsius okay emissivity of this surface is also given so this is 0 0.85 so you have to calculate per meter length of the pipe what is the heat loss so there are two modes which are possible here natural convection and radiation this is one of the most common uh, setups that you will get okay in uh, practical engineering applications also you will find uh, uh, these two coupled uh, many a times now uh, step one properties of air because air is the fluid at Tf, so which is uh, 100 degree Celsius, 175 plus 25 by 2. Okay, so property values I'll just write. I'll not write the units. Please excuse me. So you can write the units. Please write it. So don't leave it. For the sake of saving some time, I'll be writing it like this. Prandtl number is 0.688 and K value is 0 0.03210 okay now calculate Grashof number for a horizontal pipe so you have all the formulae pertaining to this in page number 138 so it is mentioned that you calculate Grashof number with respect to diameter so your formula becomes beta delta t d cube by mu squared so this is rho squared calculate this uh, you will get this value as 7.381 into 10 power 6 okay so this implies what is Rayleigh number with respect to d so this is grd into Prandtl number so Rayleigh number is 5.0784 into 10 raised to 6 Okay, on the same page, um, 138, that is, how do you calculate beta here? So, I did not mention that. Beta is 1 by Tf in Kelvin. Okay. Um, on the same page, you have this formula for Nusselt number calculation, which is step 3. Nusselt number is some constant into Rayleigh number. To the power of m based on the value of Rayleigh number you have to select this constant and m so for this case it will be 0.48 into Rayleigh number to the power of 0.25 so this formula you can use so you'll get this as 22.786 which implies uh, this is what is this hd by k these are all average uh, equations only, no need to change. Only when you have vertical plate, you will have that local and average thing. Otherwise, everything else is average values only. So, the H value is 7.314 Watt per meter square. This is what you should get when you calculate. Therefore, Q due to natural convection, I will write NC, is H into surface area into delta t so h value you have calculated 7.314 surface area is nothing but pi d i'll send the l here on the uh, left hand side by l okay delta t is tw minus t infinity so if you substitute properly and calculate so you should get let me erase this and make some space yeah so you will be getting 
it will resolve this. So Q natural convection per unit length as a 344.708 watt per meter. Okay, this is the first uh, important result that we require. Now, we require what is the heat loss due to radiation. How do you calculate it? Heat loss due to radiation is nothing but epsilon surface area sigma by uh, your uh, Stefan Boltzmann law. This is wall power 4 minus ambient power 4. This formula you can use. Okay. So if you use this formula, so epsilon is 0.85 given in the problem. This is pi d. Uh, L again, I will send it to the left hand side by L. What is sigma value? Standard 5.67 into 10 power minus 8. Here, what is the most careful thing you should do? Temperatures in the Stefan's law is always in Kelvin. Please don't uh, forget. So this is 175 plus 273 whole raised to 4 minus 25 plus 273 whole raised to 4. Please don't make this a very uh, trivial mistake of taking the temperatures in degree Celsius. Okay. So after you do it, so you will get this value as 490.567. Watt per meter. Okay, you can see for this particular problem, radiation losses are higher compared to the convective losses. So, therefore, what is the net uh, loss per unit length of the pipe? Add these two. So, it is around 835.275 Watt per meter. This is the required solution to the problem. So, whenever he gives radiation, just calculate the effect of radiation and uh, take the cumulative uh, loss at the end. Okay. So for a horizontal pipe, you have to use the correlation for a horizontal uh, configuration which is given in page number 138. And calculate the grash of number based on diameter. Okay. So let me erase this. Now we can proceed to problem number 3. Yeah. Okay, a horizontal metal plate 0.5 meter squared in area, square that is, is exposed to sun and receives radiant energy at the rate of 180 watt per meter squared. So flux is given. If the heat transfer from the plate occurs to the surroundings at 20 degrees Celsius by free convection only, so there are no other modes involved, find the steady state temperature of the plate. So he is asking you to find the temperature of the plate. Assume uh, bottom of the plate to be insulated. So this is the problem. So a very straightforward problem and a very easy solution you can get for this problem. Okay. So let me find that problem. Yeah. So uh, let us quickly represent the problem. You have a horizontal plate bottom is insulated some solar energy is falling so this is given q of 180 watt per meter square you can write qw also but i like q okay this is incident on the surface this is 0 0.5 uh, into 0.5 meter meter square so it's a square uh, the ambient air is at 20 degrees Celsius. So this is the problem at hand. So the upper surface is heated and it's a constant heat flux type uh, boundary condition that we are having. Let me write that constant heat flux. This is the uh, problem that is given. Horizontal plate. Horizontal plate. So the solution to this problem, you uh, need to refer to page number 130, uh, let me take 7, 
page number 137 equation number 2.2.1 so please find this in your handbook page number 137 in 7th edition that is equation 2.2.1 so you have this uh, temperature equivalent temperature te equals tw minus 0.25 times tw minus t infinity so this is given in the uh, thing itself this is the temperature at which you need to get the properties of the fluid okay so after substitution uh, to do to get some value here so our main what is the unknown here what is that we are trying to calculate the steady temperature itself tw is what is the unknown so you assume some value assume assuming tw equals let's say some 60 degree celsius you can assume any value you assume 60 degree celsius so this implies te will be 50 degree celsius so if you substitute that here in the above equation it's all this okay now properties properties at 50 degree celsius properties of air so you note down the properties so i will not do it you please do it on your own i'll just give you the hints to solve this problem next since it is a horizontal plate so you need to calculate the characteristic length so which is area by perimeter so which we had done in the previous problem also l will be a by p so you can just call it as l only but you should not confuse this l with the length of the plate let it be lc okay so characteristic length uh, scale for this problem will be a by p so you calculate this so it should get as 1.125 meter okay so i'll just give you the numerical values for comparison crash off number based on this length lc so it will be 8.118 into 10 power 6 okay and Rayleigh number uh, which is Grashoff into Prandtl number so this will be 5.667 into 10 raised to 6 okay now based on this value you should choose the Nusselt number correlation so the Nusselt number correlation will be 0.13 which is below that uh, this formula uh, Rayleigh number based on characteristic length to the power of 0.333 so this will turn out to be 23.177 so this is equal to h into lc by k so h value is 5.24 watt per meter square kelvin okay so once you get the h value so how will you get the wall temperature so you have assumed at the start now but whether that is correct or not we have to ascertain so how to do that we had solved a similar problem in an internal flow where we had assumed some temperature and later uh, checked whether that is correct or not and then uh, modified it based on the value that we get okay now you know that wall heat flux qw is nothing but h into tw minus t infinity this is given how much 180 so h is calculated now substitute and find tw so you will get tw as 54.35 degree celsius now what is your conclusion this is not same as 60 degree celsius your assumption now consider tw as 54.35 and repeat the calculation and repeat the calculation and check whether you will get uh, a value closer to this you can assume for second trial trial 2 trial 2 sorry assume tw as some 55 degrees celsius and repeat all these steps see what is the tw you get if it is very close to your assumption of 55 so you can safely stop the solution and conclude that 
evolved uh, the steady state temperature is so much is this clear so when he has given the wall heat flux so this is uh, and asked you to get the steady temperature of the wall so you have to assume the wall temperature uh, do it like a trial and error type of approach uh, solve the problem by assuming some wall temperature and then later modify it based on your uh, value that you get for the wall temperature okay so let me erase this entire thing let us take up the last uh, problem of natural convection a vertical pipe 15 centimeter outer diameter 1 meter long has a surface temperature of 90 degree it's a constant surface temperature situation and you have a vertical pipe if the surrounding air is at 30 degrees Celsius what is the rate of heat loss by free convection per meter length of the pipe if the pipe is inclined to the vertical so there is some inclination given so how to uh, solve this uh, problem so I'll not solve it entirely I'll just give you some clues I hope uh, you can get the solution on your own so it's not very difficult the vertical pipe can be treated as the vertical uh, plate only uh, for uh, practical to solve the problem so you have a vertical pipe so which is given sorry for my sketching it's not very good okay no i'll just erase and re-sketch it doesn't look yeah so you have this vertical pipe okay now it, it looks okay so 15 centimeter diameter outer diameter is given and uh, wall temperature is constant so tw is 90 degrees celsius t infinity is 30 degrees celsius so this is what is given in the problem you need to estimate the rate of heat loss and when there is some inclination theta is equal to 30 degrees celsius what is the heat loss you have to calculate so this is a very uh, straightforward problem you have to treat it as a vertical plate as i told you page number 135 will give you the list of all the formulae required for this so first you get tf so tf is 60 degrees celsius calculate grashof number uh, with respect to what you will calculate you should calculate it with respect to length l okay so you length sorry we had taken it as height so you can write h or l doesn't matter so let me call this as l with respect to l you have to calculate so l is not given so is it given yes it is one meter now sorry so l equals one meter so which makes things simpler so this is rho squared mu sorry rho squared beta g delta t l cube by mu squared substitute all the values I will just give you the numericals for comparison sake 915 into 10 power 9 so Rayleigh number will be 3.421 into 10 power 9 so what is your conclusion the flow is turbulent because it is greater than 10 power 9 very important step in this problem so once you know it is turbulent use a turbulent correlation page number 136 for turbulent flow you have the correlation as 0.1 times uh, Rayleigh number to the power of 0.333 so this is the formula so you will get 150.57 if you do the calculation properly this is h into l by k so h value will be 4.3606 if you look closely there is a condition given of when to uh, use this formula so he says that d should be greater than or equal to 3.5 by Grashof number based on l 
to the power of 0.25 so this condition is given so you can check it out so d is 0.15 so this will turn out to be 0.132 so obviously this condition is okay and you can apply this uh, correlation so it's uh, you should read what is given there and then only you have to decide whether that correlation can be used or not so 4.3606 watt per meter squared kelvin is the heat transfer coefficient you will get so q is h a delta t so pi dl h a delta t h is the value that you have calculated so q should be what is area pi dl uh, you will get this q as 123.309 watts he has asked per meter length of the pipe so it doesn't actually mean anything because length itself is one meter so this value itself is per meter if you divide it by length one meter q by l is nothing but same value 123.30 okay so now going to the second half of the problem he says that you have to incline your pipe so when you Give this inclination. So in page number 136, you have a clue as to what you should do. Page number 136, he says, the new Grashof number is nothing but the older one multiplied by cosine of the angle, cos theta. So it is given there. So you can just uh, utilize this and repeat the uh, steps. So you should get now still the flow uh, will be turbulent even when you do this so Nusselt number you will calculate using the same formula uh, and uh, heat transfer coefficient everything you will get so heat transfer coefficient will be 4.159 for this case watt per meter squared kelvin and cube by l so will be 117.614 watt per meter so this is the answer that you will get for both cases so as an assignment try to qualitatively reason as to why you have this decrease when you make the uh, pipe inclined at 30 degrees so you try to work this out and with this we have come uh, to the end of this uh, lecture series on module 3 uh, we have come across a lot of topics uh, related to convective heat transfer. If we summarize everything, we started uh, with forced convective heat transfer. Uh, we uh, went through external flow situation. We went through internal flow situation. We discussed the physics, the mathematical governing equations, the boundary layer simplification, the momentum integral approach. Uh, we have uh, discussed all these things in natural convection again uh, we have repeated the same thing we have discussed the physics but we did not go to the analytical solution owing to the complexity of the problem so if you are interested definitely you can do it so you will find it in any good textbook as to how to uh, obtain this uh, momentum integral using momentum integral approach the correlation for Nusselt number calculation this can be easily obtained for natural convection situation also you solve a few more numerical examples uh, taking uh, from good textbooks try to solve variety of problems and when you get doubts you please you can get back to me um, I will give I will share my contact details uh, at the end so you can uh, contact me uh, regarding your doubts I'll try to clarify it try to work out uh, semester and question paper problems also so that you will gain confidence and you, you can perform well in the examination remember the derivation of the governing equations and all those things are not asked in the examination uh, very frequently uh, problems numerical problems are uh, very important and they are asked uh, many times so the same type of problems that we have chosen are appearing in the examinations also. The dimensional analysis aspects of both forced convection and natural convection is very important. And also the uh, explanation with regards to the boundary layer 
sketching and explaining the velocity and thermal boundary layer. So this is also very important from the examination point of view. Um, and last but not the least, all the non-dimensional numbers and their significance. So this is also very important for your examination. I hope that you will do well in your uh, semester and examination. Uh, with that uh, thought, I'd like to conclude this module 3, this lecture series. And uh, I told you that I will share my contact details so you can I'll just write it here. My personal email ID is and contact number is double nine zero three one seven three. So you can get back to me uh, at these two numbers um, and clarify your doubts. So I will be very happy to answer your queries. Uh, study hard, prepare well, and do well in the examination. Thank you very much.